What's up, everyone? It's Diana Morgan, and bringing you guys another video. So, this time we're doing we're continuing the freshman uh, series where you guys decided to basically on the key decisions that we have to make in the freshman, and I am going to play them. And also, this is also a diamond run through, which means I'm going to do as many. Uh, Diamond options as possible. Um, and so yeah, a lot of them I've, I've already bought over the like 20 times that I played this. So a lot of them I already own. The only ones that I won't, that I probably won't get, are the 30, 30 diamond options. Those are a little bit much. I mean, some of them I already own, but any like new ones I might not. I might or might not. Depends on the option. Anyways. Let's get into this. Let's do this. I have dogs on me, by the way. <clears throat> Turn off the audio. Chapter 2? Chapter 2. Rooftop Games. Chris? You're my roommate? That's why I recognize... That's why I recognize the name Aurora. Nice to see you again, Rumi. Yeah, great to see you too. Again, I don't, I don't really know why they didn't recognize each other. Okay. So, what about this roof, huh? You can see the whole town from up here. Why do they have roof access? Yeah, so beautiful. Beautiful? I can only assume you're talking about me. I wasn't... I'm just messing with you. I know. I know, I know, I can come on a bit strong. My name is Zach, but you call... You can call me your number one fan, because you're straight up crushing that look. Nice to meet you. It sounds like you know fashion. Well, one of my ex-boyfriends was a model, so kind of? I'd say you make... I'd say that makes you a resident fashion expert. Please promise me that means we can go shopping together sometime. <laughs> I only... Only if I can come too. Sounds like fun. I mean... I feel oh sorry I mean I feel like we're missing we're still missing someone. There he is. Hey Tyler. I have feelings about you. At the far end of the roof, you you spot a guy sitting by himself, looking out at the stars. Tyler, enough with the shy nerd act. Get over here and talk to our new roommate. Oh, hey there. I was just trying to see if I could spot Cassiopa. The constellations are just a little different here than back home in California. You're into stargazing? I I used to do that all the time when I was little. Oh, really? Aurora, sidebar. Zack pulls you aside. Okay. Just to fill you in, my boy Tyler has a massive instant crush on Abby. And I'm making it my mission in life to get these those two crazy kids together. Are you with me? You want to play matchmaker with you want me to play matchmaker with you? Consider this match made. Glad to have you on board. Let's get started. You, as you head back to the group, Zach pretends to trip and accidentally pushes Abby into the, into Tyler. Tyler, I'm so sorry. I er, uh, thanks for catching me. Any time. Uh, I mean, any time you fall into me, not any other time. This could take a while. <laughs> so what now? I think this is supposed to be a party, right? Truth or truth, right? Maybe we could start with some drinks. 
Uh, Aurora, I've got a bottle of wine down the down in my room. Want to help me go get it? I thought you weren't allowed alcohol on campus. Well, in the norms, I should say. Um, also, also, in the, um, later, we find out that Becca is 20 when we, if we tell them to act her age. And these people are younger than her, which means... None of them should be drinking in the United States. <laughs> They're all underage drinking. What are you doing? I'm not sure why this was like over this was this was a big oversight because like <laughs> I mean Pixelberry's based in in California, so they should know this, but they just I mean unless Becca got hold held back a lot. These guys are under drink or underage drinking. Um, so yeah. Do you really need two people to grab a bottle of? Just come on. Yeah, MC, take a hint. Aurora, take a hint. Okay, confess. You're into Chris, aren't you? What? Me, Chris. I'm tr- I'm just trying to warn you. I'm pretty sure he mentioned something about a girlfriend. What? You mean Becca? That boxy sorority girl we ran into a week, a wel- at Welcome Week? Yeah. she. When we first met, she was like exorcist level possessive of him. <laughs> no, the girl Chris mentioned wasn't Becca. It was someone from back home. Huh. Now I'm curious. I need to know if... Si- if Chris is single, because I'm just not, because I'm just that no- nosy. I don't actually need to know. Any, I don't actually need to know what my roommate's situations are. I really don't. <laughs> we're living with this. We're living with this guy. We have a right to know if he's available. Makes sense to me. I'm pretty sure I know how to get him to spill his guts. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch and learn, my young apprentice. Aren't we pretty much the same age? Details, details. If you play your cards right, you'll get to ask Chris anything you want. I don't actually want to ask him to be single because I don't really don't care. Back on the rooftop, Caitlin opens the bottle of wine and starts pouring it, pouring it into glasses. Except for underage. She leans and whispers to you. Leans over and whispers to you. This is step one. Get him drunk. Yeah. That'll work. <laughs> she came and hands Chris a glass of wine. Huh. I'm more of a beer guy, but thanks. Want a drink, Aurora? Wine? I'm in. A woman after my own heart. We are underage, but that's okay. <laughs> Tyler and Zach pass out in the glasses, and you all clink your yours together. To an unforgettable freshman year. Cheers, everyone. Indeed. I'll drink to that. So, what now? I'm glad you asked, Abby. I think it's time for us to play some truth or truth. What's that? Truth? It's truth or dare, except the, you have to pick truth. No dares, so no one's running or taking them around through the crowd. All in good time. We've got a whole year together, after all. Fair point. Since it wasn't, it was your suggestion. Why don't you answer the first truth, Caitlin? Oh, why don't we start with someone else? Like Chris, for example. Nice try. Go ahead, Aurora. Ask her something. Are you single? Tell it. Okay, Caitlin. Tell us about your first kiss. <laughs> you just had to go there, didn't you? You don't have to answer if you don't want to. No, no, rules are rules. My first kiss was 
in middle school with this guy named Aaron. We were at a party and we were all playing Seven Minutes in Heaven. And Aaron was just had just eaten a jalapeno for on a on a dare. Hot. Yeah, really hot. When I came out of the closet, I was blushing, and everyone and everyone thought I liked him, but it was just the stupid pepper. <laughs> I haven't gone near guys or jalapenos since. That's too bad, because jalapenos are bomb. I'll take your word for it. Who's next? As soon as Zach's turn to ask a question, he puts on an exaggerated thinking face and scratches his chin. Hmm, what to ask, what to ask. Got it. I wanted someone to tell me their ultimate fancy. Sorry, ultimate fantasy. This is some strong wind. What? Well, you, you are a total lightweight. Yeah, more like that. Says the guy who's gone from sitting on the couch... T- oh, sorry. Wow. Says the girl who's gone from sitting on the couch to lying on the ground after two glasses. What? It's comfortable. So, Zach, whose ultimate fancy... Did you want to hear about? You know what? You know what? I already forgot. Who should I ask, Aurora? Let's go ask uh, Caitlin. I think. No. Um. No, Caitlin's is um being is the chocolate one, which I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's ask Caitlin. Okay, Caitlin, I want to know your ultimate fantasy. I guess I'm a romantic at heart. Okay, maybe something with soft white sand and waves lapping at our feet as we kiss on the beach. This is getting good. Oh, and we need a bottle of champagne and a plate of chocolate-covered strawberries. Scotch that. I want to be covered in chocolate. There it is. Not bad, Caitlin. I like the way you think. The game continues as you wait for an op- for your opportunity to ask Chris a question. Oh. Uh, don't freak out, but I've never actually kissed a guy. Wait. Not even one? I've kissed like 20. <laughs> On the same day? Very funny, Tyler. Though three of them were on the same day, yeah. And the best part is, I never got caught. Okay, you're officially the coolest person I've ever met. Who skinny dips in a public pool? Who skinny dips in a public pool? Heroes, Aurora. Heroes. Okay, Tyler, I dare you to kiss. You can't dare me to kiss anyone. There are no dares. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Until finally. Looks like it's your turn to ask me a question, Aurora. Caitlin leans over to whisper to you while you think of a question. Try not to be too obvious, Aurora. What's the weird? Do you have a girlfriend? What's the weirdest place you've ever hooked up? Ooh, nice. The weirdest place I hooked up, huh? My girlfriend, well, ex girlfriend, set up a romantic picnic at our for our two year anniversary right on the football field. The sun set one. The sunset, one thing led to another, and we got chased off by the cops, and I lost my favorite shirt. Still, those were good times. Sounds like she was pretty special to you. She was. I wasn't going going to go into this, but my ex 
X's name is Nicole, and she's the first person I ever loved. We were together for three years, but when she decided to go to coll- to another college, she dumped me on the spot. That's so harsh. To be honest, I'm, not, I'm still not over her, and it'll probably be a while before I am. That's why I promised myself I'm just going to have fun fun here. No serious relationships for at least a year. Huh. That's smart. You got to protect yourself. And I wouldn't be fair and it wouldn't be fair to the next girl who you date if you're still not over your ex. Exactly. Listen, enough about me. Can I ask Aurora a question in the return? What do the rules say, Caitlin? So far, it seems like the rules are whatever Caitlin wants them to be. Ask away, Chris. Okay, Aurora. What's your take on love? My take on love? I'm open to love, but I'm not desperate. I fall in love way too easily. Love is just a chemical reaction. <laughs> Let's go with this one. Seems wise. Best to, to just let it happen. Exactly. Interesting. Very interesting. A few rounds of drinks and questions later, Abby looks at her phone to check the time. Well... I hit my embarrassment quota for the night, so I think I'm gonna turn it. What? It's so early. It's two in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> Honestly, I am a little tired, but I just want to say this is the most fun I've ever had. Me too. It's going to be an amazing year. I'm so glad I have you guys as my sweet mates. I love how we just met and they're already, we're already friends. And on that note, I'll see you in the morning. I actually think I'll be I'll head to bed too. Besides, we've got plenty of nights like these to look forward to, right? I guess you're right. As Caitlin and others and the others leave the roof, shoots you and Chris one last meaningful look. What was that look about? Ah, uh, nothing. Just one of those looks, I guess. You gaze out into the starlight, ca- starlit campus, shivering in the night air. So, not tired? Not yet. And I want to save this, you know? Our first night together as sweet. Yeah, that doesn't happen. It all starts here. You never... You nervous? A little. You? I Oh, I'm terrified. But it's a good kind of terrified. And so... And so long as you're around... I've ha- I, I'd say there's a lot to look forward to. Chris. I feel exactly the same way. I know we just met, but I feel a connection with you. Maybe it's not cool to say that, but I had to get it off my chest. (coughs) I'm glad you did. Really? Really. Listen. I know I must be throwing out mixed singles. The truth is, I'm really not looking to start anything serious. But here, in this moment, with, but here in this moment with you, things just feel right. Chris moves to sit closer to you, and takes your hand cautiously at first. When you don't pull away. He interlaces his fingers with yours and smiles down at you. 
let's go to my room. <laughs> no, thank you. You're not the guy that I'm hooking up with. <laughs> I think it's time we call it a night. Oh, yeah. Oof, relationship damaged. Uh, yeah, I guess it is a bit late. Sorry if I'm, I was coming on a little too strong. That's not it. It's just been a long day, you know? <laughs> That's not <laughs> And as nice as this is, a girl's gotta get some sleep now. And then. Get some sleep now and then. Gotcha. Maybe we can talk some, some more later? Seems unavoidable. We do live in the same suite, after all. Oh, you can definitely have roommates that don't talk with anyone. Ever. Or with each other. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> right. How could I forget? Good night, Chris. Night, Aurora. You wake up at, uh, to the sound of your phone ringing. Oh, what time is it? You grope in you grope in the sheets for your phone and find it beside your pillow. Four missed calls from my parents. What the? You walk down the hall and step out into the chill morning air. Take the call. Mom? What's going on? Why didn't you guys call me four times? Aurora, there's something I have to tell you. Did something happen? What's wrong? It's your father. He, he just lost his job. We can't pay your tuition. Don't you have savings? This is what savings are for. But but I haven't even started classes yet. Didn't you already pay for the classes? Mom. This, this is so unfair. We're so, so, we're so, so sorry about this, Aurora. We're going to make things, make this right, okay? Your father just needs some time to find a job. We love you. Yeah, I love you too. You hang up the phone. This can't be happening. What am I going to do? Dun dun dun. We're going to go on to the next chapter. But after we watch this together. Oh, this ad again. I've had this ad like a few times. It's kind of annoying, but at least it works. At least it works. Okay. Watch it like not work after I say that. Anyways. Let's play the next chapter. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. The Assistant. After you get off the phone with your parents, you meet, you meet up with your friends in the kitchen. Aurora, is everything okay? I, I don't think so. My family's broke. We don't... Well... Uh, what started off as the best week of my life just turned into a nightmare. We can't lose you. We've just bonded. We've we've bonded. I guess there's only one thing to do now. I have to enjoy the time I've left. I have to find a way to stay. I'm not going down without a fight. Hell yeah, that's the spirit. Maybe you could get a job. No offense, but tuition runs like 50000 a year here. Minimum wage isn't going to cover that. 
there's gotta be something, some way you can stay. I mean, I'm here on a football scholarship. I don't think I'm exactly what the football team is looking for. Maybe not. But I'm sure there are other scholarships available. Not a bad idea, Chris. It might be worth a trip to the financial aid office to check it out. A few minutes later. Next. Hi there. My friend just realized she's super poor and needs a scholarship. Caitlin. <laughs> what? It's true. Besides, if we're go if we're trying to get this done fast, we've got to get cut right into the chase. Let's see. Let's see here. Any special skills? Uh, let's say I'm a scholar. I was valedictorian at my, my high school. What? How come you never told me? You're a huge nerd. Oh, Man. Ugh. What? Oh, I already said that. Just because I happen to get great grades doesn't mean I'm a nerd. Whether you're a nerd or not, all our academic scholarships have already been distributed. There has to be something. Well, there is one thing, but I'm not quite sure you'd be up to it. For, to it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. It's nothing personal. It's just, well, we do have one research assistant position open. It, it would pay for you for your tuition, plus room and board. But it's for Professor Vasquez. <laughs> Professor Enrique Vasquez? The famous author? The, the names of all lost things is... The names of... Oh my gosh. The names of all lost things is one of my favorite books ever. Working for him would be amazing. Spoken like someone who's never met him, met the man. Professor Vasquez has taken on over a dozen assistant assistants in the last five years. None has lasted more than a week. Until now. That's what they all say. I'm special. The thing is, the thing about me is, I'm desperate. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a good thing? <laughs> uh, yes. If you say so, good luck. You need it. A few minutes later. I think this is the place. Think time to make my first impression. Hello? You! You're the guy I saw across the squad the first day. I, er, uh, wait. Are you a student? Guilty as charged. I am Vasquez's, <laughs> well, protege, I suppose. Puppy dog. This is getting painful to hold. <laughs> Anyways. He helps me with the play I'm writing. I he I help him with the odd with all oh my gosh. I help him with odds and ends while he's been between assistants. Can you hold this yourself? Hold this yourself. Don't be lazy. Ugh. Yes, hold the chew yourself. I need to get up. Ugh. He's between assistants. For a second, I thought you might mistake me for the professor. What gave that me away? And the fact you're not 70 years old. Hey, I could be an old guy that looks good for my age. I never said you looked good. <laughs> so, you don't think I... Your conversation is interrupted by a voice that shouts from, as a voice shouts from down the hall. 
James, I've lost my latest pa- pages again. Get in here and help me find them. I better get on that. Here, here's hoping you stick around. I'll let the professor know you're here. As James leaves a notebook, as James leaves, a notebook falls from his backpack onto the floor. Caitlin surreptitiously snatches it and snatches it up and reads the cover. Looks like someone dropped the script for his play. Should we run after him? I'm sure he'd want it back. Yeah, but if we did that, we'd never get to read it. Caitlin eagerly clips the pages. Blah, blah, class disparity, blah, 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 working conditions in Victorian London. Oh, here's something here. Caitlin, I'm not sure James want, would want, would want to, uh, you looking through that. This is getting juicy. Apparently James has a creative imagination. What are you talking about? I'm not sure I should show you. It might warp your innocent mind. Caitlin! This is hot stuff. Tell you what, one time offer. You and I can do a little line reading. What do you say? Let's read the scene. Come on, let's read the scene. Let's see, Rose Thorn Park. Looks like you'll. Looks like you'll be Elizabeth Darling, and I'll be William, the stable boy turned a war, turned soldier back from the war. Hey, and why do you get to be the cool brooding heartthrob? Heartthrob. I think that's obvious. Now, let's get started. Lady Elizabeth and Darling wakes up to find her bedroom bathed in moonlight. Then, as she watches, a shadow appears at the open window. Your line, Aurora. Be warned, intruder. I keep a knife under beneath my pillow. Careful, then. I'd hate to die before tasting your lips once more. The figure enters the room. It's William. You... You know you can't be here. William pulls off his shirt and tosses it to the floor. His eyes on the knife in Elizabeth's hand. If you mean to stab me, if you mean to stab me, do me the courtesy of giving me a quick death. I can't live without you anyway. <laughs> Elizabeth then lowers the dagger from his chest to his trousers and cuts through his belt in a single stroke. Oh wow. I can't believe James wrote this. He seems so straight-laced. Sometimes people will surprise you. Elizabeth reaches forward and gently strokes William's cheek. Um, are we following stage directions too, or just reading aloud? I leave that up to you. What do you do? Let's stroke Caitlin's cheek. You can brush Caitlin's cheek with the backs of your hands, of your fingers, making her blush. Oh, Aurora. I mean, oh, Elizabeth. <laughs> you, she places a hand on your waist and pulls you close, gazing into your eyes. You have no idea how long I've awaited this moment. Sometimes the waiting makes it all the sweeter. You place your hand on Caitlin's chest and feel her heart beat. Against the te- the te- teeps, against the tips of your fingers, 
of horror. I <clears throat> I hope I'm not interrupting anything. We were just enjoying my play, or at least I hope you were enjoying it. Actually, I want to join in the reading. I read better. I can't wait to read more. That's nice to hear. I still don't quite know how to finish the scene. I have a couple ideas. But you do. Oh my gosh, I skipped it. I didn't mean to skip it. And unconsuming romance. What? I don't know what that word is. Well, there's no reason your play can't be the exception, right? I guess we'll see. Just then, you hear footsteps approaching. Who is making all this racket out here? Sounds like my cue to leave. Good luck, Aurora. An older man storms into the room. You! Are you the one disturbing my peace? We... We were practically whispering. <laughs> Professor, allow me to introduce your new assistant, Aurora. Assistant? What a joke. Have you ever assisted anyone before, Aurora? I mean, not professionally, but I like to think of myself as helpful. My last assistant thought you was being helpful. Right up until that moment, she hopefully lost a flash drive containing three months worth of work. And then there was the assistant before her. He thought it would be helpful to hum while he dusted my office. The cacophonous the melody was right was rattling around my head for weeks. I couldn't write a word on my new novel. And then there was the last guy. He had a distracting sense of fashion. So many stripes. Wow, how terrible for you. Terrible is an understatement. Do you think Faulkner had to deal with such distractions? His family afforded him the peace and quiet of their barn. He got quiet solitude. All I get are assistants. I understand, but I won't be like your other assistants. And why exactly is that? I'm different because... I'll actually stand up to you. Because I'll be, I'm willing to do anything. I already assumed that it was the prerequisite. Extremely disappointing. Get out! You turn and take a step toward the door. Then you stop and look back at him. No. No? I won't get out. I'm going to stay. Yesterday was incredible. I made friends faster than I ever had before. It definitely happens quickly. I... I can't just walk away from this. I know in my heart that this is where I need to be. And I'm not going to let some angry old man ruin that. Listen to you. Reactive, angry, entitled. Your ca- your caricature of your own, your entire generation. As he says the words Professor Vasquez stops for a moment and then which ex- which actually makes you exactly the person I'm looking for after all what I'll explain later for now I'll accept you as my assistant on a trial basis starting immediately in fact I have a pressing matter that I need you to take care of tonight. Let's call it your first test. Anything. I'm on it. Vasquez walks over to his bookshelf and pulls out a massive, dusty old novel. This is my second novel, A Winter in July. I need it to. It needs to be digital, digitized by tomorrow morning. 
No problem. I'll scan it right away. Actually, no. I need it formatted and formatted as a text document. You'll have to just transcribe it by hand. But, but it's like a thousand pages. In that case, you'd better get to work. There's our roomie. I heard Caitlin said Caitlin I heard from Caitlin that you got a research job. Let's celebrate the room garden is calling my name. Guys there was nothing to celebrate. Vasquez is crazy. He wants me to scrim, transcribe his thousand page novel tonight. Even if I work all night, I'll I'll be able to pound out a couple hundred pages max. Typing at a hundred word at a hundred words a minute for eight hours, assuming two hundred fifty words per page, you generate one hundred ninety two pages. Wow, did you just do that math on in your head? Uh, is that weird? Weird? No, no way. Smart and smart is sexy. Really? Totally. Wow. Uh. Thanks. Have a smile shyly as Tyler as at Tyler as you wink at Caitlin and Zach. So back to the matter at hand. What do you think, Tyler? According to my calculations, one person typing alone can write 192 pages in eight hours. But if all six of us do this together, we'll have more than enough time to write the full book. Go team, let's do this thing. You, you'd stay up all night helping me with my with this stupid project. It doesn't. It does mean I'll have to miss several fabulous frat parties tonight, but I'm in. Eh, I didn't have plans anyways. You belong here, Aurora, with us. I'll start with a pot of coffee. Oh, I'll start a pot of coffee. It's gonna ta- be. It's going to be a long night. Let's write some pages. All right. That'll be it for tonight. For for right now, let's uh, watch the ad. Um, it's just one again. All right. Alright then, that'll be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.